Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, who are all interested in a very, um, I would say, challenging discussion about climate change and its impact to business. Aim of this debate is to raise awareness about climate change and uh, the impact that it will um, evidentially create on the business environment because changes are coming and winners will be those ones, obviously, who will be prepared the first. So today's discussion is hosted by the American Chamber of Commerce in Latvia and Swedbank. My name is Janis Krops, I'm spokesperson for Swedbank Latvia, and I'll be moderating today's event. Uh, the aim of this discussion, of course, is based on three main issues. First of all, international treaties have declared we have just 10 years to halve emissions in order to avoid dangerous impacts from climate change, and uh, the threshold for dangerous warming is around one and a half degrees of Celsius. Second thing, Europe has made ambitious decisions to redesign the Union's economy in the um, aim to become more resource efficient, thus of course meaning dramatically reducing emissions and changing the way business functions as such. And the third thing of course that will be achieved by policy shift, it will require from entrepreneurs to be able to revalue their way of doing business and to analyze their business strategies in order to cope with this change. So the biggest challenges apparently will be First of all, how to maintain business stability. Second thing, how to maintain profitability. And the third one, how to adapt to the new rules, keeping those two above mentioned already uh, in positive line. Uh, for sure, we can be clear that those companies uh, who will fail to act on new challenges will face as well many difficulties. As such, for instance, physical and financial vulnerability to climate impacts. Uh, second thing definitely will be legislative uh, obstacles. As we tend to say, it, for a while it will be carrot for the change, but later it might be changed by the whip. You know, those who are not changing, they will be whipped and in order to be pressured in this change. And the third thing, of course, is reputational aspects amongst the key stakeholders, such as investors and customers. Uh, we have seen many cases that business is pushed by the customers who are demanding faster change for the greener policy. And the fourth thing, of course, is lack of access for capital or investment that sums up in a way that it might be reduced competitiveness for business who will do, uh, let's say, the strategies of the old times, who will try to avoid sustainability and climate change reducing impacts, and thus this will be less competitiveness for these companies. So today we have very big variety from the people in our panel. For discussion, I welcome Eddie Scheitzans. Uh, he's representing Ministry of Economy, especially in, uh, he's Director of Energy, Market and Infrastructure Department. Hello, Eddie. Hello. Uh, Mrs. Aldo was all Deputy State Secretary from Ministry for Environmental Protection Regional Development. Hello, Aldo. Hello. Uh, from business side, we have Tuom Sauškaps, Head of Communication and Development uh, in company Baltikovo. Hello, Hello everyone. Uh, we have Liene Dubova, member of the management board Nasdaq Riga Stock Exchange and as well vice president of Amcham Latvia. Hello, Liene. Hello. And uh, in distance, in remote conversation, we have Lauris Menz, is head of corporate banking from Swedbank Latvia. Hello, Lauri. I hope you can hear us, you can see us, we can hear you. Uh, it's very nice that we can uh, connect all these things together to be, you know, like in the discussion in real life, in the same time to have the Zoom uh, conversation with Lauris. Uh, why I'm holding in my hand the phone is because we have as well a Slido um, option to ask all the questions. You are welcome during this conversation to ask your questions using hashtag 96746 as well that you will see on your screens now the code to ask your questions, to vote on these questions and we will try to answer them during the conversation and of course in the end we will make short Q&A session. So the first thing as we have here, legislative powers, I would say, Ministry of Economy and Minister, Ministry of Environmental Protection. Let's start with this overall understanding what is coming on our tables because definitely whatever European Union will decide to uh, implement on us will first come to your tables and then it will be implemented to us, uh, the business part and the customer. Eddie, question for Ministry of Economy. How big is the impact we're embracing for a while? Yes, thank you for, for the floor. Uh, I, I will start this discussion from my side. Uh, if you look on, uh, on this uh, topic and climate change topic in, in, the, uh, in the global perspective, uh, I was yesterday I was thinking what to say and what was the main, uh, main common understanding on this, uh, in this topic. And uh, I can uh, just assume it uh, that who will adapt and transform will sustain in the long term run. And it was mentioned correctly in, in the beginning, in the introductory part, that uh, of course the uh, uh, global, uh, global way and global tra trajectory is uh, going to the climate change, uh, uh, f fighting the climate change, as well as also in, in Europe there is a clear statement and clear goal where we are going. And actually what we have now, uh, I can just uh, 
change a little bit the question, uh, not what will be on the table, but actually it's on, the on our table set uh, All currently. Right. All right. And uh, what we see is that there is uh, quite ambitious uh, targets from European Commission side and from Europe, from all, uh, many member states in Europe. Uh, and uh, uh, definitely it will uh, impact us as a member states as well. We also should realize that uh, every country in, in, in Europe, uh, it's um, currently in a different, uh, different starting points. And uh, there is some uh, countries who is uh, greener and uh, greener countries, and uh, some who is not so so much. And uh, so-called brown ones, yeah. Uh, we can call them brown ones, grey ones, uh, as we want to call them. But uh, anyway, uh, from from Latvian perspective, I could say we are quite green country, and, uh, and then that's a good point for us. But uh, in the meantime, of course, we, we have a big challenge for us. Uh, if you reach the current level of the uh, green of your economy, it uh, becomes more and more difficult to step one, sto one step uh, more and more. And uh, therefore, of course, um, uh, all these uh, political uh, policy documents which are prepared in, in Europe uh, definitely will, will, will have the impact to the Latvian economy as well. And for us, I could say, from, from, for uh, uh, public servants, I could say, uh, together with our private stakeholders, we should find a way how to move forward. And of course, uh, uh, the targets and the aims in Europe and in Latvia, it's one part. And from, from the other hand, of course, uh, we need to find a way, find the uh, real uh, trajectory, how to achieve uh, these targets uh, and uh, uh, not to jeopardize the competitiveness of our economy. Can you just give an emphasis, uh, emphasis for uh, what are those targets, the, the, the main uh, three? Ac actually, I, I could uh, put three or four of them. Uh, uh, from from Minister of Economics perspective, uh, our, we, we have prepared and uh, in the beginning of this year it was adopted uh, our National Climate and Energy Plan. And it uh, 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 defines a clear vision uh, where from Minister of Economics perspective, I could say from, uh, from uh, uh, public governments, we, we, are, we need to, 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 to reach. And, uh, Therefore, from, from this uh, political document, I could say there is uh, four main targets. I could uh, define them. One of them is uh, uh, reducing the emissions. Uh, uh, second one is increasing of uh, renewables in our energy mix. Uh, third one is uh, in, uh, increasing the energy efficiency. And, uh, and uh, these are, I, I could say, yes, three, three main points, uh, what, what we are talking about. And, and these uh, three, three main targets and aims, of course, we have a different activities, actions in, in this climate plan. And uh, we have defined a clear way uh, together with stakeholders, other stakeholders, how to implement this uh, main policy document. And um, definitely, if, uh, let to be honest, uh, if somebody thinks that the, some, some sectors will get out of this transition, I could say that it's, no, it's, uh, I think uh, every sector will be um, impacted by this green transition and uh, uh, some of them more, some of them less, but anyway we all will be engaged in this uh, common process which, are, which started in, of course in, in the world and it comes to Europe and we are now sitting down with member states. And uh, of course uh, this uh, national climate plan of, of, uh, also defines uh, the activities, actions, incentives, some, um, some possible tax uh, policy uh, adjustments and so on and there is a, a lot of uh, tasks and uh, uh, what uh, we together with our uh, colleagues in other ministries should implement uh, just to, to get to, to the point we have defined and, uh, and find the, the, the way how to better get in this point. As I understand, as we have here Ministry of Economy and Ministry of Environmental Protection, so you kind of cooperate kind of well. Although I presume you have very good cooperation with Ministry of Economy, at least you are the closest ministries. But one of the questions is how you implement this transministerial cooperation, I don't know, with the Ministry of Education. Do you see the big challenge there as well for state actors to be able to cooperate? That's uh, quite a wide, uh, wide question and probably also with Ministry of Economics, uh, the, the quality of cooperation depends on the issue. There are issues where we, we are fully aligned and there are issues where we have really uh, tough fights and, and you never know who wins. Uh, but um, before I, I go to the question of uh, an education and awareness raising, which is uh, of course important and where we do need uh, also um, cooperation from Ministry of uh, Education, uh, let me get back a bit to the climate change issue and uh, the European Green Deal because uh, you may all be aware that the uh, European Commission proposed it as a new working uh, program, European Green Deal, for uh, five years. It was almost a year ago. 
And uh, it has several building blocks. Uh, one of them is a more ambitious uh, climate policy, and, and we already see proposals on the table and, and more uh, proposals will follow. So the National Energy Climate Plan most likely will have to be uh, revised uh, uh, sooner, uh, let's say next year or by the end of the next year. Uh, so the climate targets, uh, it's quite certain they will become more ambitious uh, within Europe and also uh, in Latvia, and that will require more ambitious uh, policies, more, more assertive actions in, in several fields where, where we uh, face challenges in mitigating. Uh, climate change and, and cutting emissions, so those being uh, transport sector, also energy, uh, agriculture, quite difficult uh, area of work, but uh, still. And, uh, Is agriculture the area where people say, like, but we are green enough, we farm on green land? <laughs> Well, that's where I would question how, how green is Latvia, because in the agriculture sector, uh, emissions have been increasing ever since 2005, and the trend uh, is uh, on the rise uh, still, and, and that is the sector where it's more, most difficult to uh, bend the curve and, and achieve reductions. Uh, there are more um, quite, quite, quite difficult actions, also politically, to take uh, decisions on that. Uh, but still, there are measures that are feasible, like uh, more precise uh, fertilizer application and, and uh, more efficient uh, use of different things. But, but th there are also other initiatives within the Green Deal, and, and they are all uh, part of uh, on how we are, are going to transform uh, the economy and also the society, like new chemical strategy, new industrial strategy. Uh, more ambitious energy policy. So there are a number of uh, initiatives that are either already on the table and being discussed or are coming that we are aware about. So, but the, the green uh, transformation is on its way and indeed uh, everybody has to be a uh, part of it. Also the Ministry of uh, Education, because if we are not able to explain why it's needed, what are the benefits, it uh, might be quite difficult as we saw with some proposals, like with uh, tax on, on a, a, a car registration, uh, this proposal had to be dropped uh, and we have to return uh, to it uh, in a different way probably next year. Uh -huh. So meaning challenges uh, remains enough high. To Oms, you're rep representing, I'm thinking, more food production company or agriculture or both? Uh, we are representing both. Both. This is, uh, so when Alda mentions that agriculture field is the hardest, let's say, in the process of changing this thinking, I understand that Baltikovo has done a lot of stuff already. So can you shortly implement why you did this, as a short example? Uh, yes, if, if we talk about uh, our production and the agricultural part is where we are raising uh, pullets or, or, or the young chicken and, and uh, where, where the eggs are being laid. So this is the agricultural, or agricultural part, not the food processing and packaging. So uh, what we have done already, so uh, if we, let's say, what, what we have uh, realized that as, as the two main risks, both are related to, to the climate change. And first is that uh, we have to feed the chicken with something. And this is uh, the, the feed or, or the, uh, the, the cereals which, which uh, come from local farmers is actually we have faced already a problem a few years ago when it was 2018, it was very hot and dry summer, which immediately gave impact on a, on a very, very bad harvest. It was very poor harvest and it was uh, low in its nutrition. And so it, it immediately gave us like a 30% of uh, price increase. So and this, this is what, what we are studying all the time. We are trying to look for alternatives. Uh, we try to mix because the, the feed formula co consists of like up to 15 or even up to 20 ingredients. And we, we have a formula which involves prices and nutrition, which, uh, but in order to have the best food quality to get the best results. So this is one, one of the issues which we really care. And uh, we are, uh, of course, first is uh, uh, we have to minimize the business risks, with a, perhaps with financial instruments, by hedging or, or, or buying it in, in, uh, in, the, in season. The other way is to find to look for alternatives, like uh, alternative protein sources or uh, other 
nutritions. I mean, you need, you need to stay flexible in the way how you use this formula for feed. I mean, yes, yeah. there's okay. definitely like two main ingredients is price and nutrition yeah. value. So, and, and, and with this, we had to vary. Like, like uh, protein is a, is a main, main nutrition. Yeah. Of course, we locally, it's, uh, we are used to feeding it with a rapeseed uh, cakes and rapeseed oil. We can uh, substitute it with a soya, with corn protein, or with uh, other proteins that there are. So, so, so when climate change tunes in, I mean, it m changes this balance of what you get as an outcome for this feed. Of so course, we, we prefer to, uh, to buy into sourcing local, local feed, and, and you cannot uh, grow soya here in the Baltic, so we, we rather prefer uh, rapes, uh, rapeseed cakes or, uh, or, or perhaps uh, corn is a good alternative. But otherwise, yes, if, uh, if it's getting really bad, then, then we have to look for perhaps uh, soya as an as alternative. Lian, a short question, like in this ma manner of we understand that uh, there is a political side that must be implemented, uh, there is a business side where companies are facing the fact that climate change is a risk and uh, it uh, directly hits them by the prices and by the quality. The question is for the stock exchange. I mean, does stock exchange feel the climate change? Well, um, then I should look a bit back. Actually, stock exchange uh, has been dealing with these issues for a while already, actually. And uh, of course, we all understand that like in order to like comply with all those new requirements, let's say, if they will be like coming from the uh, regulation or it's like some, some other uh, just uh, like industry uh, driven uh, reason. Of course, all companies will need some money for in order to, you know, to, to make those, uh, realize those projects and, 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 and do those things which are requirement, required. And then, of course, the question is where, where to, to to, to take this money, where, where to get it, and um, and the stock exchange is the place where the companies are are like attracting funding for for their projects, etc. And then what we see actually is that uh, this demand from investor side uh, for for those green or or sustainable instruments are increasing. So like investors are are really looking for for those instruments, and it's kind of a green light for the companies and saying that well. If you have green projects, something related to the sustainable business, just make an instrument and come and, and investors are, are, are waiting for you. And, um, but yeah, exchange has been dealing with those issues already for a while and, um, and uh, it, it all started quite uh, 10 more years ago. And, um, and at that point of time, there was a feeling that it seems that uh, there were like also a specific regulation towards listed companies requiring uh, the ESG reporting uh, as an obligatory thing, etc. But we all understand that no listed companies will not save the planet. Uh, obviously, it's like all of us. It's it's not just. But they can start the a change. But they can start. Yes. Uh, that's, yes. Exactly. And that's uh, that's what stock exchange is about. It's about transparency. It's about like disclosure, and and that's why uh, we, as a Nasdaq, we we have um, uh, created some kind of uh, uh, tools for our companies to tackle those issues, to address those issues, to kind of communicate with the investors and stakeholders and society that how green we are, what kind of like sustainable things we are doing. So. Alda has a comment because for ESG reporting, we'll still come back. Alda, yeah, please. yeah. Just uh, you mentioned that yeah, listed companies will not change the world or not save the world, but uh, European Sustainable Finance Platform and EU taxonomy might well do that. Not the world, but at least the uh, European Union, and it will also affect, of course, the way Latvian companies or anybody operating in Latvia will work because uh, if your I mean, if, even if you are not trying to benefit from public uh, investments through through EU funds or, or something, and you approach bank for uh, funding, uh, they will have to look whether it is a green investment or it's uh, brown or gray or, or black. And then you might not just be able to get access to funding if it's not in line with sustainability. And, and that's also issues that uh, companies have to factor in uh, when planning their future. Aldo, thank you for this comment because you kind of made a bridge for me for the question to Lauris because uh, it was one year when I was in uh, this uh, festival Lampe and there was discussion from one uh, Canadian polar scientist who was taking uh, all kind of uh, business people to the Arctic uh, just to show the melting ice and the thing was 
to show in life how it looks, the climate change, so they would reconsider implementing these things back at their home. So question for Lauris, as he's representing corporate banking here in Swedbank, will banks save the world? I mean, uh, we clearly see that stock exchange said uh, listed companies will not save the planet, but maybe those will be banks. Why bank becomes involved in this sustainable race? Yeah, <clears throat> well, somebody has to, and, uh, and should it be the bank, then it's banks. But yes, uh, I'll start answering uh, specifically for, for Swedbank, because we feel that uh, with the history and, and the heritage uh, that, we, that we have, and by the way, this year we are celebrating or, or, or 200 years, uh, where we have sort of for so many years kind of provided uh, kind of uh, many households and businesses uh, with uh, financially sustainable uh, Kind of uh, advice and, and solutions, we feel the, our obligation to, to, to fully commit to the initiatives under the UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, as, as well as the Paris Agreement. Uh, as, uh, as, as, as we see it, uh, that uh, the, the climate change risks uh, are, are, are very big for uh, actually for the, for the long term growth of prosperity of, of many companies and, and private individuals. And we feel our obligation and, and with our reach uh, to, to, to contribute to those developments. And the banks uh, in general, uh, as you asked about the banks in general, especially such as uh, Swedbank, uh, having the universal type of operations, uh, have very kind of global impact on, on the sustainability issues and, and driving the change. Because it is either through the investments that we make under our asset management companies it is either through the loans that we issue to the to the corporates and private individuals. It's either via payment infrastructure that we provide and facilitate, and as well as the supply chains as we part of it. So we have this kind of profound impact, and and that's why we are important change agent in this in this in this story. Uh, as a head of corporate banking, let's say if a client of Swedbank approaches you and asks, like, so. Explain me, what are the climate risks for my business? What would be your answer? Yes, I, I think we, 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 have, we, we, came to, we have come to the point uh, where we clearly recognize that, uh, that the climate risk basically equals financial risk. And, and that is actually the notion as, as we approach of it. You know. The banks have built basically their operations on, on, on kind of you know, managing their risks sort of, uh, and, 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 and understanding the risks and assessing the risks and, and making sort of uh, uh, long-term decisions. You know, most of uh, kind of the decisions the banks made are, are long-term because we are issuing long-term loans. Uh, we are making long-term investments. Uh, so we need to be informed about those risks. And, uh, and, and, and having the understanding that the climate risk uh, is a financial risk uh, for our customers, which obviously transfers it, uh, that it's a risk for the bank. So that's why that is why important that, that we start kind of you know raising the awareness about kind of you know realizing understanding trying to assess you know uh, capturing sort of these type of the risks and uh, and and modeling how it will affect the sectors how it will affect uh, the individual companies or the business models uh, there is no kind of uh, one single recipe kind of out today to handle those but there are frameworks that enable you know the, the sort of structural thinking around those topics and i think that at this phase we are uh, we are i think you know trying to sort of bring this topic to the to the to the top of the client's agenda so sort to of speak uh, and and i'm kind of drawing a little bit of the parallels with the, with the kyc ml area that, that that has used to be a very hot topic for for last couple of years in latvia uh, maybe initially it was understood that this is a predominantly bank's domain, uh, that, you know, this is something that the bank should handle. But, you know, over a very kind of short period of time, I think we progressed where, where, uh, where the clients uh, sort of uh, and, and broader kind of corporate community understood, you know, that this is a type of the risk, you know, as any other type of the risk that also the companies should have uh, the necessary mitigations in place. And that kind of contributes to the, to the, to the development and, and, and evolvement, you know, on this topic, you know. I think the same, uh, the same thing will happen sort of uh, uh, around sustainability, you know. Of course, there will be some kind of, you know, sense of urgency makers and, and, and kind of early birds, you know, with these the topics. But I think very sooner, very sooner, but later, it will become sort of an in integrated part of the, the clients, actually kind of strategic and uh, sort of agendas going forward. 
Working with the business clients, uh, can you give us the more or less the temp average temperature of understanding? Because Swedbank has one of the biggest amount of business clients in Latvia. So let's say to your feeling from one to ten, uh, these companies, how much they understand the mm -hmm. risks of, uh, coming with climate change? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, it's, it's it's a mixed uh, picture because obviously we we, we serve a uh, kind of you know wide range of customers, kind of uh, large multinationals and, and 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 small kind of you know micro companies, and of course you know depending on the size uh, of, of the companies, they have sort of a respective size of their expect, uh, respective economies and, and 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 issues at hand. So 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 for for multinationals uh, or, or or companies that are kind of you know operating on pan European level, for instance, we 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 see that you know these topics uh, kind of have arrived you know on their agendas for uh, for 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 kind of very kind of uh, long time already, and and that's why I think we are kind of sort of you know <laughs> equal speaking partners because they understood sort of. Uh, uh, what, what risks and issues are at hand? You know, it, for more, for them, it's more about kind of you know strategic choices. Uh, you know how to uh, which to make in, in light of these uh, kind of you know developments and 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 uh, and yes, but I think you know awareness uh, awareness is there. You know, for 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 more kind of local and and, and medium sized companies, of course, we we have to sort of you know be critical. You know, uh, oftentimes, especially you now during the COVID, it's uh, it's about kind of you know financial survival and and. And maintaining sort of the earnings capacity uh, that 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 were there in in the in the pre-COVID time, so uh, so so sustainability is is area that requires kind of investment, both kind of you know mentally, so to speak, you know, from the mindset perspective, you know, and 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 the end of the day also kind of you know financially, it requires uh, sort of you know discussion. So so I would say this is a, this is a mixed uh, mixed picture so far, but uh, I think this this awareness is is growing sort of you know as as as, as you know by day basically. As the awareness is still growing, how would you say for a while it's still the moment when companies are still getting some sort of the bonuses if they if they decide to become sustainable? Or sooner or later, it will become to the time when they will be more pushed towards this direction. And then, let's say, the sticks and whips and all the bad things will appear, meaning that they will be forced to implement the change. And if yes, if they will need to be forced for that, who should do that? Will it be business uh, uh, actors like banks, financial system? Or should those be state actors like ministries, parliament, legislation and executive power? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I think it will be a combination of, 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 of all those. Uh, you know, the first of all, you know, we have to sort of understand that sustainability, it, it means kind of, you know, transformation, you know. It means transformation for banks, it means uh, transformation for the clients. And, uh, and, and we saw, we see kind of our kind of role and responsibility to, to enable and facilitate uh, the transformation of our clients. Of course, uh, you know, having an also understanding you know that we have to sort of you know readapt and transform our businesses you know uh, as well because uh, because like like i mentioned in the beginning uh, the uh, the sustainability and particularly the climate uh, kind of related risks uh, they they represent a new category of risks that that need to be measured kind of assessed collected integrated into the kind of uh, standard banks business processes such as uh, credit uh, credit uh, due diligence KYC processes which leads to obviously strategic uh, sort of investment decisions that the banks make that the bank makes so so we we have to do all kind of homework but uh, and, and, but in parallel we have to sort of onboard also our customers so uh, I, I think uh, that uh, there are some some frameworks uh, that uh, that enable this transition and and I should uh, mention one uh, which is uh, task force uh, on the climate uh, related financial disclosure or recommendations uh, that are ar arising from this uh, from from task force on climate related financial disclosures which actually sort of uh, puts uh, puts in uh, puts uh, puts this information sort of you know on the table you know uh, as it requires the companies to 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 measure and disclose uh, information about sort of their their their, their kind of you know uh, an environmental footprint and once uh, sort of this information becomes more transparent you know the more uh, easier it is to discuss to start discussion around uh, the topics you know uh, you know what we should do sort of going forward and that's why uh, we as a bank sort of are are going along 
along this route and 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 implementing these recommendations. And of course, we will advocate also kind of our clients, particularly kind of you know the the the, the largest ones, uh, uh, to 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 adopt uh, those recommendations as well because it dramatically increases the transparency of, of all these risks and enables you know, the better decision-making around how to rectify those going forward. Uh, I will remind for our audience that we still have an opportunity to ask our questions in Slido application. And uh, there are a few questions coming in, and one of them is very fitting for our discussion. So can somebody explain exactly what is climate risks? Alda. Can you step us back a bit? So, okay, first thing we have heard for many times, this is carbon footprinting emissions, but how big are those risks and what sort of them? I would then uh, say that we have to look in, on two sides uh, when we look, uh, talk about climate change and how it affects uh, Latvian business environment. Uh, so one is uh, the, the need to adapt to uh, already happening climate change. Uh, that is probably an example that Tom's uh, mentioned uh, about the feed uh, and, and uh, if there is a bad harvest then uh, due to drought or something uh, then it immediately affects the business. So similarly also I can imagine that a ski resort business is also under huge risk and banks might not consider to, to give out more loans uh, to them. Uh, so similarly, there, there will be uh, changes happening even if we would stop all emissions uh, right now. Uh, like uh, there will be changing precipitation uh, levels, so more um, uh, rainy uh, summers, uh, longer vegetation periods, so it might also give some opportunities probably for, for agriculture and so on. But so the question is how, how you use these opportunities and how you uh, assess these risks. On the other side, uh, we also talk about uh, climate mitigation and, and that's where the policy makers come in and uh, also the ministries and our role uh, with more ambitious policies and in uh, introducing both uh, emission reduction uh, activities measures. Uh, we also have to realize that in, in medium and long term, we look at the changing of, of different uh, systems, like mobility system will, uh, is about to change, or uh, the food production system also is, is uh, due to change uh, the way how we produce food and, and how, how we uh, use uh, d different things. Uh, also, um, housing will change. So. Uh, and, and we are moving towards circular economy. So the question is, uh, which companies will be first to, to realize what new opportunities there are in this changing environment, in this transition? And so it's on one side there are risks, on the other side there are these opportunities. And those who are in affected sectors uh, with high emissions and will not be able to uh, uh, adapt to this change will certainly lose out. Uh, before this discussion, Tom's mentioned very well one good example about the climate change. I mean, we all have this, uh, at least fans of summer always say, yoo-hoo, there will be nice things, summer will be longer. Just who, who understands it will be more rainy, maybe not that hot. But the thing is, it affects as well birds flying here, uh, all the mig migration roads, uh, routes or, or such. So, Tom, as I understand, there was an issue that migrating birds can affect your farms. It is a constant risk, actually, because the, the avian influenza or bird flu is, uh, is one of the hugest risks we, 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 we have in, in, in our uh, business. So and it's basically twice a year, every year, and, and here comes that Baltics is uh, located, or Latvia is located right, it's, it's like a highway for the, the huge migrating bird uh, crowds. We always like to brag about that we are center of everything, you know, so <laughs> yes, so uh, transition point. And so, so, so their traditional route is from, from northern Siberia towards Africa and back, forth and back, and then every time they, they cross our territories there is a risk of falling something down okay and this is this is how we uh, and how we minimize those risks again we we invest a lot in and again actually just a small uh, step back you you asked your colleague Lauris about uh, what is the who will be the judge for the and what is what is the sustainable investment and uh, so so my belief is definitely that that sustainability itself is is or, or or future is the answer who will who will be the judge because i totally believe that each and every investment that is sustainable 
has a, has a definitely positive uh, outcome, outcome. Like a, like a or uh, actually it's, it's not always, it's definitely not the cheapest way, but it's the only way. Okay. Uh, because like, like recently we invested nearly 2 million euros in, in non-earning uh, uh, units like, like water cleaning uh, equipment, which is... It, it doesn't it's, bring it's nothing straight away back. Exactly, right? yeah, but, but without that investment, there, there is no future of the company. The thing is, this water cleaning, recycling equipment becomes so important that it kind of jeopardizes all the company itself. If you don't yeah, have it, absolutely. then you just can't, uh, yeah. can't, can't maintain your business. Yeah. One of the questions is about uh, the tax issues. Eddie, how you would comment? Those who are stepping towards sustainability, should they get some sort of tax benefits or those maybe who are not stepping in front, will they face more taxing? Um, it, it's, it's definitely the tough the discussions also, it's going in uh, uh, between our ministries in, uh, in, in, in the government se sector as well. But actually, as I mentioned, in, uh, in our national and clim uh, energy and climate plans, there is uh, potential activities. And uh, some of them, of, of course, is also linked to the taxation policy. And uh, definitely the tax, uh, taxation policy is one of the instruments who, which could uh, uh, tackle these issues and uh, just uh, give the possibilities to, to, these, uh, to those uh, companies who is uh, uh, working sust in sustainable way and trying to implement all these activities what, uh, when we are uh, tackling these climate goals, so definitely the uh, taxation policy will, uh, will give some uh, benefits. Uh, but uh, of course, it's uh, also th there's a question about the, uh, the way and how it's easy to, to make such a tax policy. I think it was uh, all the mentioned one example of this year when it was a proposal for, the, for taxation for the cars. And uh, as we all aware, what was, uh, uh, what was discussion in the society. Therefore, I think for, from my understanding, uh, first point what we should uh, uh, understand is that the point of education of, uh, of or mindset uh, changing of our society I think is uh, one of core principles uh, at the moment when uh, when our society which also includes our business uh, sector will understand in the sustainable way and uh, all this uh, climate changes are existing and we should tackle them and uh, think about what uh, future we will leave uh, in in what shape we will leave our planet for our next generation I think it's a main topic here and uh, and uh, as far as our society will understand that we need to, to work and live in uh, such a way, I think it will be much more easier for us also to implement the tax policies. But uh, definitely tax policies will be one of the, one of the points where we, we are looking as uh, supportive measures uh, how to implement this. Meaning, policy. let's say those companies now who on the value basis understand like, yes, sustainability is a matter for me, it's a value for me, I will do it just because I believe in that. They obviously with time will have some sort of tax bonuses, but meaning those who will say, sorry, these are not my values, just a new type of uh, green business for some sort of scams and stuff, they will obviously be pushed later on because sustainability will, be ac will become so huge matter already that either you are on the board or you're out, meaning this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, one of one of these things will definitely be in the future. But uh, I think that it will be com uh, complex uh, matters of activities. There will be no one 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 way how we will make the tax policy, which will definitely be one one uh, one activity which will solve all problems. No, it's uh, definitely not. I think it will be sort of complex matters. It will be the I think the current policy for those who are using these green technologies, innovative technologies, uh, pushing the energy efficiency, pushing the renewables inside. Uh, from the other hand, of course, there should be some uh, uh, stick policy for those who are still using the fossil fuel and are not thinking about sustainable way. And therefore, I think it will be the complex uh, measures uh, in combination how to, to move forward and to achieve these goals. One of suggestions from our viewers is like maybe there could be some sort of a new standard system like uh, ISO standard that uh, would measure like for state tenders. If you're sustainable, you get some bonus points. Are those kind of uh, systems as well? reconsidered? Um, actually, there is a lot of uh, activities and actions in, in our plans and uh, definitely it could be included in some of our policy proposals in the future. Uh, I, 
Actually, I, I can't say currently that definitely will be one of the ways because there will be a lot of discussions also with stakeholders and the, we always welcome the, any proposals or ideas from uh, all stakeholders uh, which are interested in the sustainable sustainability. And uh, definitely all these public procurement topics also will be on the tables in the future. As far as I understand, on the state side is the same thing as part as I understand on the business side. A lot of new things coming in. Uh, not so unitary view how they should be digested and implemented. So question for you both, I mean, from the executive powers, how, how you see how much time we'll need to have, let's say, some straight vision from the state side where we're going, or you think that it's okay now? That it's clear, we know the targets, we know the way? Um, I think I can start. And, uh, I think the targets is only one, one, uh, one side of the, of the coin. And of course, uh, with the targets, we, we show the vision and the goals where we need to, to go. Uh, from the other side, of course, it will be not enough just to mention the target and say everything will be solved. No, it's, uh, it's not true. And uh, of course, definitely, as I <coughs> mentioned also previously, that uh, we have in, in our pipeline a, a lot of different activities, tasks, incentives and tax policies, which are uh, still under uh, consideration also in, in, in ministries. And uh, definitely in coming years, there will be some uh, proposals also from, from state side, because otherwise, if we just uh, define the targets, it's not working in such mm. a way that uh, we define tools. targets and the business is coming and just realizing that no, I think it uh, should be the combination of uh, current and stick policies, and then we can uh, try to find out which is the best solution. And of course, uh, the, the, the ideas and proposals from business side, what is the best way also for them, how to implement all these targets? Because uh, I think that the goals are common for, should be common for all of us, not only the four states, but also for business and economy. And if we go uh, hand in hand to, to follow and to, to, to reach these targets, I think we can uh, succeed to do that. About the yeah. cooperation and the way uh, we cooperate in, in the public sector, uh, I think a National Energy Climate Plan is a, a good uh, example because uh, there are a number of ministries and, and sectors had to come together and then we, we knew the, the headline target of emission reduction of renewables, but then we had to come up with measures, what are the most cost efficient, what are feasible for uh, Latvian circumstances and so on. And this was done in cooperation both uh, across uh, uh, sectors and between ministries and, and different players were involved. So uh, the, the mechanisms are already there. What I uh, believe we need to, as public uh, sector, also to communicate more clearly to, to business side, uh, what are the directions and policy areas and uh, the, the vision where we are uh, moving to, to give some clear uh, signals. Because it, I, I might guess that uh, it's not always understood uh, uh, what different activities we are all, all dealing because if you look at the Green Deal, there are so many uh, directions of activities. And, uh, and so it consists as well as a, of a beautiful European rhetorics, you know, like, as well. let's keep so the innovation high, you know, so how <laughs> will you do that? So there is not, not always you can read from those policy yeah. papers uh, what, what we really uh, mean by that and probably there is a space for improvement, but we also as Latvia is an uh, EU uh, member country, we also have to realize that there are a number of initiatives that are shaped uh, in Brussels and somehow adjusted in Latvian circumstances, but still uh, the direction is, is, is set there. And then we also have to move along and discuss there what is best uh, for us and how to use it. So we might not always be happy also with, with okay. the, some aspects of it. So meaning it will be a compromise. As I'm thinking, let's say I imagine myself as a small company owner and I think like I hear all of this and I understand, okay, I have no clue where to search for the information. So what would be the first step? I know that stock exchange Nasdaq has made its uh, ESG reporting system. ESG stands for environment, social and governance issues. So is it a s sort of a manual for company to understand what company should do if really cares about uh, tackling climate change? Yeah, actually it is, and um, I, w I would just like start with a, like my my kind of personal understanding is that uh, that of course listed companies should uh, should ha make a report and uh, like you know fulfill different regulatory requirements etc. But uh, when it comes to the ESG, there are like of course there are some companies who who should report, and then there are, there are some who are like uh, joining uh, vol voluntary. 
and, and really paying, paying attention to that because I personally believe that uh, reporting shouldn't be for the sake of reporting. No, you should have the meaning behind it and you should also as a company should have really understanding and, and you cannot manage what you don't measure. So it means that you should uh, control the things, you should make a structure how you, how you run your business. And from those uh, three things, environment, uh, environment social um, uh, issues and, and governance issues, then perhaps this governance part is more popular because, you know, corporate governance has been a topic uh, discussed quite broadly for a while already and a lot of, you know, like companies are, are following these things and understand and that stands behind those all like um, board compositions diversity risk management and including also all the reporting disclosure how you are like communicating with the society and stakeholders and then the environmental and social aspects those are the things uh, of course like uh, a company uh, can pay attention and in this reporting guide uh, actually companies can a uh, company can uh, just take a look, there are 30 criteria, 10 uh, under each of, of those aspects and uh, just um, go through it, they are like in very like easy reading manner, uh, drafted um, like uh, questions uh, and think, make this homework, uh, which aspects are the most important ones, which are relevant to your industry, to your company and of course you shouldn't, you're, perhaps no one can do anything, you know, you, everything. So you, you should like concentrate on some of the things. And when you have this homework done, when you have a truly kind of understood what exactly I as a company can do, uh, then perhaps makes sense to, to, to look further. Then no, you can draft the report, you can communicate with the society, society you can draft the projects, etc., etc. do those things and, and, and so on. Like listed companies are, are some, somehow a bit like struggling with those like re ESG reports because again that's the regulatory requirement. But again, also these things, um, you know, if you have uh, like pure understanding why are you doing it and, and uh, what exactly are you going to do and, and what are you doing now, then this reporting is a matter of like just technicality. And it, and it is available for everybody. I mean, yes, they it's can find it on your web page. Free, yeah, it's so totally they just need to search ESG report and they will monitor Exactly, something. ESG reporting guide and it's updated according to different like uh, regulatory things which are coming out uh, quite, quite frequently. And One of the questions from viewers is, what do you see as the duties of the company boards in introducing sustainable corporate governance practices in the company? So meaning, I more or less think of example of our pension funds when they say like we have invested uh, in some sort of companies and if they don't have uh, sustainability governance uh, strategy acts in their uh, corporate uh, practices, we just push them to have them. So what sort of the impact would be like? What board should do? Board should come up with the idea that they need such a strategy in the company or they should appoint somebody to do it or yeah. everybody must do whatever is suits them best. Yeah, no, then if you are like following those good corporate governance principles or recommendations, then that's the, that, that's the thing companies well. should, should do. So that's uh, like obvious uh, next step. Let's go more to the practicality side. We have a good example. We have a business person who has been through this transition uh, period. Uh, is it, let's say, uh, accept, ac acceptable to say that Balticovo is through the transition or you still would say that you're in transition? Uh, I don't think you're you're gonna be ever through. Uh, Sustainability entirely. is sustainable process it's itself. Like it's always. It yeah? is. It is a process. Let's call it. It's like meaning no, it's of life. You always uh, search for one. I like the the philosophy of dropping those. All those. It's just a process. It's it's not a green deal. Mm. It's a deal. It's the only. It's the only deal. It's the only way. Uh, so so basically, and uh, it's definitely a big uh, shift of mindset especially for those who are grown-ups now, who have uh, grew, grew up in uh, early days when it was all different mindsets. So, but uh, I would, uh, let's say, if, if the, the first uh, opportunities, as, as I see, and which is also a, a kind of change of mindset, is uh, I, would, I would grab uh, or, or suggest to start with the elements of circular economy. And this is like the same, like equals to efficiency or increasing your efficiency, which again is a, a smart management of your resources. And uh, like, like uh, prior to talk about uh, recycling something, uh, think of not producing waste in, in general. Like, like we are not, we are 
not wasting a single egg out of two million eggs every day. And like those which are not good or A category to be packed in the, in the cartons, uh, all are reprocessed to the liquid or, or boiled egg products or which are totally not, uh, not good for uh, as a food. Those are out of those uh, ingredients we, we make uh, fish food. Or, or uh, the same with, with uh, the same is with manure. We we produce our hands produce fifty thousand tons uh, of manure every every year, out of which we can uh, and we are producing uh, biogas and electricity, which is triple times of what we consume. So meaning you could from waste that your chicken produces, yes. you can keep up to three companies of your, on your own. Yes. You can right. be three times sustainable on your own. Yes. Three Baltic ovals could be fed with a, thanks, it's not waste, it's a, it's a gold, we call yeah, it. A a golden chicken egg. Golden chicken <laughs> But the thing is, what I wanted to ask, okay, so one direction for sure is the cost efficiency. One thing is, as I far understand, uh, it's energy efficiency. You can maintain your own energy, so you don't need to buy energy, mm -hmm. so you don't mm -hmm. pay for that, and I presume you still can sell it back to the grid so you can earn money from that. Second thing, you don't produce, you don't waste materials, for instance, producing eggs that you would throw out so you can find another products for them. Uh, other thing you already mentioned about the feed, but I have heard of the thing as well that uh, you have tried to manage the, how to say, the, the, not the tender, but to buy in ecological eggs from the local farmers as a, as a, as a, as a result for that, that you cannot pro uh, produce that much of eco eggs on your own, or what was the purpose? Yeah, this, is, this is a common practice all over the Europe. Uh, of course, we, we are, again, we are both agricultural and, and we, we have our own uh, hen farms and we are expanding now the cage-free farms as well. And now we're not only cage-free, which is the barn hen houses, but we have launched in Madhuana, one of the free-range farms, which, which requires a lot of land, it's four square meters per hen. So we have a 20,000 uh, hen farm 20, with square. eight hectares of land. Where So here it's again this sustainability question and, and the dilemma because it's, it's good for the chicken, but it's, you, you are not, uh, it's not that easy to collect that manure from, from the land. So there's a conflict again. But anyway, yes, and, and of course we cooperate with, uh, with the local farmers who are producing organic eggs because that just has to be separated. You cannot, under one uh, structure, you cannot do both uh, organic and, 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 and uh, conventional. So that's, but, but of course we have been thinking of expanding our own production towards organic as well, but so far we, we're happy to cooperate with the local farmers. One of the comments in Slido is about that, um, first of all, Baltikovo is a really inspiring example, well done, that's a kudos for you, but the, another thing is about uh, change of mindset, that uh, it will take another generation or society, of society, so the money, tax fines or any other measures will change it. I wanted to ask you for another uh, aspect, consumers. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it was about your company that uh, there was circulated information that uh, I think your, your company produced eggs are not sustainable eggs, so people kind of started in social mar uh, media to say like, oh, we'll not buy them, and then you communicate it back, no, no, look, we have done these things. So how much consumer affects this change as well? Uh, well, consumers are more and more clever every day, but they are still emotional. And, and, and one thing is uh, what, what, what we all think, and uh, the second uh, is how we act. So there's, there's often a very big gap. So, but but uh, of course we are, um, and, and this was one of another, um, it's easy for me to talk about uh, food production because one of the main, uh, uh, definitely the, the big role is in, in, is, is in consumers because they are ruling our future. How and what we shall be, producing in future. So that, that's why now it's actually impossible for me to think that we will invest in future in cage farming. No, like from now on, like we, we have extensive program of cage free farming and, and also we think how to involve also the local uh, farmers furthermore, because this is what we feel and we believe that uh, consumers will demand for the cage free and I hope 
uh, also for more, more and more con convenient food. Does it help for you as well to sell your production abroad? Uh, let's say like this, we, we are exporting majority, 70% goes abroad Latvia and, and, uh, and this is why we are already ready for, for the local market because we have been supplying with the cage-free eggs and egg products already for, for many years uh, outside. But let's say there is still not, as like I heard, the uh, ISO standard. There's uh, in food production, there's BRC standard, which is uh, guiding our, our way. And it's uh, developing every year. It's changing. It's, being, it's, it's, it's coming from uh, consumers' uh, uh, requirements. It grows. It gets uh, more and more complicated every year. So uh, I think this, this is where and this BRC, which is British Retailer Consortium, made standard, which is, uh, I would say, five or maybe even up to ten times more complicated than ISO standard, which is ruling our, our everyday routine. And the last thing on this mm -hmm. matter, how long was the transition for this? How many years it took for you to, to adapt to these things? Uh, first of all, actually, it was not too long ago. It was 2012 when uh, when the cage farming was uh, made into enriched cage. It was uh, more with more space, and, and that process took, uh, I think, 10 years of uh, of changing. Now, since it it happened in 2012, since then, since like. 2015-16, it started the uh, big debates about going cage-free. Uh, let's say in Germany, in Denmark, it's it's uh, it has been done already five years ago, five or even ten years ago. So, and I believe that it's it's going to happen in in the next up to five years time. Up to five years, uh, mm -hmm. th because the question of transition is something I want to ask as well, Lauris. How to estimate this transition risks? Because it is clear that. Company can't change in one day. I mean, you cannot wake up next Monday and say, I'm sustainable or I will invest all my money in it. So how you see this transition risk? Where it starts and where, how long it should take? Uh, yeah, just uh, before I answer to, to this question, I just wanted to sort of, you know, the compliment sort of from my earlier comments that, uh, uh, and where we also kind of see the bank's role is that uh, the sustainability and, and climate change mitigation is something that we sort of, you know, everyone are exposed to, to uh, sort of, you know, company big or small, because it can, we can, it can arrive through the regulation, uh, it can arrive uh, through, the, uh, through the investors, you know, should it be sort of equity or, or debt investors, kind of, uh, which would be banks, for instance, as well, or the kind of supply chain that uh, the particular company I is part of. You know, we, 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 we know many examples that, and probably sort of their colleagues can share their own experience that, you know, if you want to be sort of, you know, uh, selling to the, to the certain type of the, uh, of the customers, let's say, uh, to, to the Nordics, for instance, or to, or to Europe, you know, you are, uh, you know, required to adhere to the certain kind of ESG standards. And, and, and I think this will become kind of more profound and I think it will be beneficial. It, it will be adopted also kind of locally. So everyone is exposed, and, to, and, and, and our role is to actually bring it to the, to, like I said, uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the relevance in, in, in the corporate agendas, you know, for, 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 for big and small uh, companies uh, to, to address that. Uh, when it comes to the transition, yes, uh, uh, the, the, the framework kind of distinguishes between two types of uh, the risks that are coming from the climate change. The one, one part or the one branch is so-called physical risks, and, and, and I think those were mentioned that we can observe already today that are coming through the, let's say, uh, kind of natural disasters, uh, floods, uh, kind of uh, forest wildfires, and, and, and some of those could be actually already observed in, in, in other kind of you know, countries and, and, and region recently. And, and, and the other part of the physical risks being uh, that increasing number of, uh, let's say, assets are sort of, and, and underlying value of, of those are, are becoming at risks because uh, changing the coastlines, uh, uh, kind of eroding roads, uh, kind of uh, distorted or, 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 or decimated infrastructure. So th this, this, this comes, uh, this comes uh, all sort of uh, in, in, into, 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 the, into the area of these physical risks. And then the other area, uh, kind of the other branch uh, sort of, of climate is, is the transition risks. And, and those are kind of more kind of difficult to, to, to maybe kind of, you know, capture, understand, 
because uh, not not sort of they are they are not kind of you know prescribed you know how they will develop you know for instance um, uh, for instance the regulation you know the one thing in, in policy and regulation uh, well there is a lot of discussions about the carbon taxations about uh, restrictions you know on, on certain types of let's say cars and 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 types of engines you know before it's out you know you can't really sort of you know kind of account for this you 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 just sort of uh, you have to model it you know when it happens what would be what would be the impact on that regulation sort of on our kind of on my business on my business model on my industry uh, the same uh, the same uh, the similar is is uh, regarding the technologies it's 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 clear that uh, the sustainability and climate change mitigations actually creates a big boom of, of, of innovation around kind of, you know, technologies that of course uh, would be kind of more sustainable and would be sort of, you know, addressing, uh, addressing these risks. But uh, not all these innovations will be sort of, you know, future proof in a way. So uh, there's a, there is one more kind of area to consider, you know, what kind of technological development do we see on the horizon, you know, which will be sort of, uh, sort of the winning, uh, sort of winning combinations of those. And, and 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 another area to mention is of course uh, uh, changing uh, cost, customer kind of behavior uh, because uh, uh, maybe uh, and it comes to the hand with the change of the mindset because uh, uh, some some companies and, and some business models will realize that uh, actually the market uh, is is not kind of receiving sort of anymore the goods and services because the customers uh, sort of you know start to basically penalize uh, kind of the, the wrong behavior kind of uh, from uh, from from a climate footprint uh, perspective and it is not yet out today but you you have to sort of model kind of that aspect as part of uh, your uh, kind of you know transition uh, transition risk uh, mm, uh, yeah assessment and you know i'm, I'm coming back to to the bank's role is to is to be this uh, sort of both kind of you know enabler for the for the discussions uh, with with the clients uh, to 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 map map those risks and to arrive at at, at best possible so kind of decisions because you know with today's i think information i think the companies are not actually sufficiently equipped to make uh, sort of you know sustainable decisions from the viewpoint of mitigating the climate risks so so this this becomes a more broader as we speak now uh, how do you see the competitiveness risk i mean the thing is uh, it requires time it requires energy it requires investment to become more sustainable uh, I, I would mention them as an old uh, way thinking black uh, coal or uh, oil smoky burning companies who say I will do business as till now. I don't want to change. So can it be that they become more competitive for the short term and they can earn more while sustainable companies trying to reach out for the new level? Is, is this a risk? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, of, of course, uh, there are kind of uh, well, well, different strategies and, and, and maybe sort of, you know, from, from a gaming theory perspective, you can argue that, you know, you can benefit uh, sort of short term uh, when, when you don't sort of you know invest and 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 onboard the cost that is required to 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 be sustainable and, and your competitors do and and you got uh, and you're getting some some privileges, but uh, I, I think that uh, I don't think this is uh, this will be broad based because uh, you know by the day kind of uh, the awareness about this topic and the uh, actually transparency of, of of this information is going kind of more and more kind of available. And that's why uh, you, you, you can't uh, you, you can't make long term bets. You know, I think, you know, if, if you ask me, you know, on that kind of strategy, uh, uh, maybe again, coming back to the to the to, to, to the banking industry, then uh, it's no surprise that uh, that the regulators, the policy makers have chosen sort of the banks as a sort of, you know, intermediary kind of how, how through which to push forward you know to, through, through these changes because of the impact that we have on a broader economy that i mentioned in, in, in the beginning of our conversation and uh, and and since banks are already heavily regulated sort of types of businesses you know we should expect that uh, there could be sort of coming additional regulations for instance in form of uh, additional kind of capital requirements for let's say brown or or not let's say <laughs> environmentally friendly assets 
which would disincentivize kind of you know banks to to hold on sort of to those assets and if if they would do it will be sort of much much uh, much costlier to the to the to the to the to the to the, to the client you know and 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 it it goes hands in hands you know of course if you don't choose to to sort of you know go along sort of with this kind of mainstream uh, sort of development uh, then and 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 remaining to be sort of brown then obviously you'll be kind of be left alone you know you know there is a high chance it will be much more difficult and costlier to obtain the loan it will be much more difficult to to be the the part of some supply chain so i think these these risks would would, would quickly materialize and the other aspect of of of, of regulating <clears throat> and and thereby kind of raising this awareness is that I mentioned about the capital requirements? It could be also in form of uh, disclosure and uh, and and information uh, that that the banks needs to 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 report. And in order to do so, they will have to, of course, forward that uh, to to the clients. And it will be sort of a requirement to develop sort of the, the competences and and capabilities on both sides, on the bank sides to 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 assess that, and and the client side to. To, to really kind of measure and 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 come up sort of with these uh, with these uh, with these data and information in order again to to fulfill this chain of 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 of, of disclosure requirements that will be put forward to the banks. So uh, so having said that, I think that you know all kind of you know forces will be sort of aligned to to make these kind of uh, sort of counter uh, counter uh, let's say productive decisions less uh, less viable. But that's my personal opinion. Uh, one of the viewers have uh, been writing comment about, uh, let's say, the green transformation grants in European Union, that up to 2027 there will be 100 billion euros meant for this green transformation. And uh, I don't know, a particular question is, is there any funds for Latvian startup clean tech industry in plan, but Alda maybe in general you could say, or Edis, uh, could mention about the help of these transformations for the local companies. Do we see it as an opportunity for companies to do something more innovative, to come up with new products or to come up with uh, new services? Um, yeah, definitely. I think um, if we touch the, the, the topic of the EU funds, uh, definitely we have the pla uh, till the 2027, there is um, some allocated funds in different uh, and different funds. There is uh, EU structural funds. There is uh, some some kind of additional funds in, in that. I can't uh, maybe say correctly whether this uh, particular uh, company or this particular sector will be financed. But definitely, we have located there is a lot of uh, fi financial tools in all these funds uh, allocated also for the uh, companies for these uh, transition elements, for these green transition elements, and uh, all, uh, energy efficiency policies and so on. Uh, renewable uh, implementation of renewable energies there definitely will be. One more thing is uh, we are just also now there is uh, hot discussions also. In, uh, in, in, in ministries and between ministries about this uh, new new possibilities funding each, uh, each recovery and res resilience fund and uh, of course there's still discussions ongoing but uh, we see that there will be could be some allocated new uh, possible funds also from from such uh, new new source of uh, financial source also also which would be in, uh, in in the future available also for our business uh, to transform their their, their uh, activities. Just short, short comment uh, in addition to what Eddie just uh, mentioned, uh, all these uh, funds that, that come from EU are, are um, uh, there is a requirement for earmarking of, of climate financing a certain percentage so you are obliged to spend uh, like for uh, this uh, recovery resilience uh, fund you need to spend at least 37 percent uh, for climate uh, related investments and for uh, EU uh, structural funds which, which is less but uh, still it already directs investments towards uh, climate-related uh, activities. Uh, Liana, how do you see this thing? Uh, who should raise the flag of this green initiative? That, that should be state bonds that are saying, like, uh, we would like to be invested from the green side, or is this big pension funds that say, like, uh, we invest only in green companies, we don't want that old, unsustainable way, or is not, it is not that easy? Or just emittent stocks? to say like we're a green company, we're a sustainable company, invest with us. Is it possible even in stock exchange? Well, I, I would say that uh, actually it, sh it should be a combination because as I said in the beginning that listed companies alone will not save the planet. Uh, I meant really that 
we, in order to make a change, we, we need to have this critical mass. So the, of the companies or of the people who are like really understand the topic and really kind of do uh, and act in accordance to, to that. And, uh, and therefore, it doesn't matter whether the company is listed or, 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 or not, or uh, it's state-owned. Perhaps like state is actually the very good uh, tool how, how a country can really uh, demonstrate, how state itself uh, can demonstrate this, these intentions to, to really kind of think, start to think about those ESG matters. Otherwise, it's like, it looks like, okay, we are like requiring from, from private business this and that, and, but then, you know, state-owned companies, you know, no, it's like a bit different story and let's, let's not talk about it. So that's, I think, not, uh, not right uh, strategy. So it should be like uh, each and every in, into that. And from investors' perspective, I believe they are like, uh, it's like, especially stock exchange investors, they are like financial investors who are looking for, for sustainable uh, profits. So for a while, so the, like these uh, like interest rates have been rather low and et cetera, et cetera. So investors are ready to switch to those green instruments, even uh, accepting this lower interest rates and, and lower like profit for themselves. But, uh, but be sure that, that this business and, and this uh, kind of uh, project where the money is put in is, is sustainable and is really kind of uh, make difference. I remember discussions with our pension funds managers uh, when they said like, would you like that your pension is invested in an unsustainable way? And you know, first thing that obviously as a stereotype works, you kind of think like, well, I don't know if I really care. And then they say like, what if I would say after 10 years, you will not have your pension? Uh, this uh, saving and you ask always like how comes you know and they say like well I will invest it in unsustainable company maybe it will be run, running out of business after 10-15 years so all your investment is gone and then you kind of rethink it we had even discussion uh, with the new experts about how they are saving for pension and all of them said well you put it this way it kind of bites me straight and I start to think about it extremely in different level so what I want to ask each of you, what would be takeaway from this discussion? Because as far as we go, there is that saying, more in wood, more timber we see, eh? or more trees we see. Timber is for business. Uh, the thing is, what would be a takeaway from this discussion with what do we start and where do we go? Okay, where do we go understand? Sustainability is a process for lifetime. Eddie, I started with you in the first question. I don't know if you don't mind to start as well on this one. Yeah, no, it's no problem. I can start. I have write uh, down some notes, of course, from this discussion. And uh, uh, from my understanding, we, we all are in one boat. And we are all uh, uh, going in one direction. And uh, from my understanding, I, I can mention three points what we can take uh, from, from the discussion. First of them is that uh, as quick as we will realize uh, real climate changes, uh, we will be ready to prepare. Uh, second one is uh, we need to define our strategy how to reach these targets. And third one, just uh, start to act. Because otherwise, you will lose the time. And in the long-term perspective, you will not be competitive to other competitors. Mm -hmm. Alda? Um, yeah, for me, also a few takeaway points uh, from this discussion uh, today. Uh, well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that uh, businesses are already uh, thinking about uh, how climate change uh, will affect uh, their business uh, operations and looking into future. So these are uh, really good news. Uh, second, well, the transition is in the process of so green digital transition. We are uh, uh, moving uh, towards this bright, bright vision. And for uh, the policy makers mm, and the government side, I, I would say it's more important to be more engaged with, with the business sector to also hear what are the real issues, how can a public uh, sector help uh, them to orient themselves to understand where we are heading. And uh, we need to raise awareness uh, as well about uh, what is coming, uh, that's through different probably discussions, stakeholders, so we need to talk about it uh, to, to get this understanding. And it's on both sides, both on the public uh, part and also the business part. Very nice transition to the business part, you know, like, so the public sector spoke, so the word comes for the business. The business sees it the same way? I think I, I will keep to my uh, previously mentioned uh, circular economy issues, uh, think of uh, reducing waste or eliminating, creating waste. And uh, okay, thanks to our 
big scale, we can, we can be flexible in, in finding uh, synergies within our company, as, 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 as you heard that we have even combination of agriculture and, and, and food processing. If you're not that big, try to look around you, look, look for your neighbors, uh, look how your waste can help uh, or, or be as a byproduct or, or try to uh, take something from your neighbor. Uh, so you call upon a corporation as well? Yeah, on the corporation. Otherwise, I think uh, it's uh, very essential is to, to change with the time and, and, and to be uh, long-term oriented. And uh, I, I love, I, I don't know now, was it African or, or Native American saying that we are, we are not using this land, we are borrowing from, from our children. So I think this is... Uh, I always remember the story, like, um, I don't remember it was con in a connection with Greta Thunberg in Sweden or somebody else who said like, uh, what's the point for kids to go to school? Because when they will be grown-ups, it might be that they don't need this education anymore. And then you kind of start to rethink this over, what they are talking about. They just don't want to go to school or there is really <laughs> the point under that. Uh, Leanne, a takeaway from you from this yeah. discussion? From my side, I think for those companies who haven't started to think about this topic, I think this is the time. And, uh, and uh, although it it's might sound quite complicated, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and like not, not so easy to understand, I think it, 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 this is definitely something company or, or management of the company and owners of the companies should, uh, should look into, educate themselves and make smart decisions. It, it always starts, I think business is all about the strategies and managing the risks. So if you are wide open in the risk field, I mean, sooner or later they will hit you and then you will have a problem. Uh, Lauri, your takeaway, I think, representing bank that manages risks, I think you are the appropriate person to ask about your takeaways from, from the risk side. Yes, and, and, and in fact, my takeaway is, is, is to be kind of more optimistic uh, because, you know, I'm representing the business uh, side and, and, and yet sort of, uh, I think uh, the, the most common word was the risk that I used sort of in, in my comments today. And, uh, and having said that, uh, yes, uh, the, the drive for sustainability and tackling the climate change, it's not only about the risks, but it's also about the tremendous opportunities and, and, and we should sort of bring that in, into consideration. Uh, for instance, uh, we, we carried out uh, uh, so-called scenario analysis, that's another kind of method prescribed, uh, described under the, the TC, TCFD framework, uh, where, we, uh, where, we, where we took uh, four biggest uh, kind of industries or, or sectors uh, that are uh, responsible for, uh, for, uh, for, for greenhouse emissions, uh, energy production, materials uh, for, for, and, and buildings, uh, transportation and, and agriculture. So, so, so we took uh, took those four sectors and, and 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 sort of you know made a deep dive into into both kind of what kind of risks uh, sort of will be coming uh, sort of uh, along with uh, with tackling the climate change, but also in opportunities. And just giving you an example that in, in energy sector there are kind of the vast field of of tremendous opportunities in the renewable energy field and and and, and creating the, the the necessary infrastructure you know for for for, for renewable energy uh, there is a whole new business segment uh, for for energy storage uh, and 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 this is that kind of both new existing sort of you know industry players as in and, and as well as the new uh, can uh, can 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 work towards to and and of course to the banks and financial markets you know will be more than than happy to facilitate sort of uh, that the journey or, or that transition so having said that it's not only about the risks which we have to acknowledge and, and see clearly but it's also about the tremendous opportunities so that that's why my takeaway is, is, is to be kind of more optimistic and and as well, I, I, I would like to be more optimistic about the sort of improvement in the collaboration between the, the private and, 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 and the public sector uh, so that, uh, that the private initiatives uh, would go hand in hand with, uh, with, a, with a necessary visibility for, for regulations and, 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 and governance initiatives that will come along because the better uh, sort of we will have a visibility of those roadmaps, the better uh, kind of decisions uh, all the stakeholders uh, will be able to make today. Uh, I will quote on your all stakeholders because there was a one question in Slido that I kept for the closing of this discussion. Uh, the question was, who should be driving the change in Latvian companies? European Union, national regulation, investors and clients, or companies themselves? 
And I think I can quote Eddie's here, we're in the same boat, so I presume the answer is all of us. Um, thank you for this conversation. Uh, it was very interesting. At the same time, I understand more we go in this topic, uh, deeper we get. Uh, those who asked if climate change is real and how it will affect Latvia, I would suggest to Google, I think it was Latvian Nature Fund, who made those nice videos how it will look uh, within 20 years here in Riga, that there was tornado passing Freedom Monument and uh, the closed bridge here for the Swedbank uh, building was all shaking around in storm. It was really freaky and then you understand, well, if, if this could happen in my lifetime, then I definitely will think of, uh, of, of, of uh, reducing my waste uh, and uh, trash I throw out in my, at, my, at my home. Uh, the thing is what we would like to ask people as well, after this discussion, if you have any comments, if you have questions, if you have just a feedback, please feel free to send it to our partners, American Chamber of Commerce here in Latvia, or to the email amcham at amcham.lv. They'll be happy for that. And of course, I hope that we have answered at least some of the questions important for you, because the thing is, as the saying says, those who want to hear something, their ears are open, they will hear some sort of inf information, and they will definitely search for more. So I think we just have a bit of open the door for this topic and we'll definitely meet within the next discussions because as you understand, the topic is very wide and it, this is going to stay here, so we will talk about it more. So on behalf of Amcham and Swedbank, I would like to thank as well our panelists, Eddie Scheitzans, representing Ministry of Econo Economy, um, ex especially Energy Market Infrastructure Department, Alda Wozo, Deputy State Secretary, Ministry of Environment Protection and Regional Development, de Development uh, Liena Dubova, member of uh, management board Nasda Kriga Stock Exchange and as well vice president of Amcham Latvia, Tom Sauškaps, uh, head of the communication and development in Baltikovo. Thank you, Tom. And Lauris Mainz is uh, remotely was uh, with us. He's head of corporate banking in Swedbank. So thank you for being with us and let's meet in another discussions. My name is Janis Krops. I'm spokesperson Swedbank Latvia and I hope you have a great evening. Bye.